President Trump says he is backing down from his legal fight to add a controversial citizenship question to the 2020 census. The Supreme Court had already ruled that the administration's previous explanations did not justify adding the question. In remarks in the White House Rose Garden late today, the president said he is pursuing new avenues to get that information. We are pursuing a new option to ensure a complete and timely count of the non-citizen population. Today, I will be issuing an executive order to put this very plan into effect immediately. I am hereby ordering every department and agency in the federal government to provide the Department of Commerce with all requested records regarding the number of citizens and non-citizens in our country. They must furnish all legally accessible records in their possession immediately. We will utilize these vast federal databases to gain a full, complete, and accurate count of the non-citizen population, including databases maintained by the Department of Homeland Security and the Social Security Administration. We have great knowledge in many of our agencies. We will leave no stone unturned. We turn now for more to three of our NewsHour correspondents, Shamish Alcindor, who is at the White House, plus Amna Nawaz and Lisa Desjardins here with me in the studio. Yamish, let me come to you. The president had been, it seemed, determined to add this citizenship question one way or another to the census. Now he's back down. Why? Well, this is a big loss for President Trump, and he's essentially admitting that he can't argue for the citizenship question to be added to the census in time without jeopardizing the census itself. So the Supreme Court ruled that the administration's reasoning was essentially contrived and that they were arguing that the Voting Rights Act needed to be better enforced, that, of course, being the Voting Rights Act that's supposed to be prohibiting racial discrimination on in voting. That argument did not fly, and the president and the government had been scrambling to come up with a solution. Instead, the president saying, now, essentially, it can't do that without um, at, at, essentially putting at risk the census. The census is already being printed. Now, critics say that this is already a chilling effect because the census is tied directly to how we distribute money in this country, how we draw congressional lines, um, and, and it's tied to the Electoral College. So there is already, some people fear, a chilling effect that immigrants will not want to fill out the census. But that said, the president essentially is conceding here that he just can't get done what he wanted to do. So, Yamish, by asking uh, all government agencies to turn this information about uh, citizens, non-citizens over to the Commerce Department, what exactly is, is the president trying to do? The president is essentially now asking every single agency in the federal government to turn over whatever records they have on citizenship or non-citizenship to the Commerce Department so that they can now have some sort of database where they can make a sort of official count of who's an immigrant and who essentially who's not an immigrant in this country. That being said, there are people who essentially say that this is about the president in some ways spreading fear in the immigrant community. Um, immigration activists that I've been talking to say this dovetails with a lot of other things that the administration is doing that it's not happening in a vacuum. So you look at the idea that the president is trying to change the way that asylum works in this country. The president's also having these detention facilities that people say have troubling conditions. That he's also now targeting immigrant families for some sort of mass raids going on this weekend. So people are saying that this is part of the president really trying to strike fear into the hearts of immigrants. And that is unfortunately working. Yamish, and we are going to come, try to come back to you in a minute. But meantime, Amna, you've been talking to Homeland Security officials. What do we know about whether there may be these massive roundups or raids of, of immigrants over the weekend? Yeah, Yamish is exactly right. This is a key issue for the administration. We know the president has tweeted about mass raids like this before. It looks more likely now for a few reasons. Look, ICE is basically saying they're targeting people who are here, undocumented, and who have been given final removal orders. What that means is they came to the United States. They made a claim of protection of some kind, asylum or something else, that was denied by a court. They're now ready to be deported. And there's a backlog of these people, several hundred thousand or so. It's an enormous logistical undertaking to run this kind of raid. 2,000 people or so are expected to be targeted in cities across the country. Weeks of investigative effort to figure out where they live, verify their addresses, make sure kids aren't going to be abandoned if parents are picked up these while they're families. in school. They are families. They are indeed. Now, one of the reasons we think ICE is able to do something like this right now is what a senior DHS official told me yesterday. Those record border crossings we were seeing in previous months, they 
dipped slightly last month. That took pressure off the entire system. They're no longer surged past capacity in terms of detention beds. They believe they have the space to go get some of these people, detain them, and then properly deport them through the channels. One of the reasons they're getting pushback, though, is a lot of those removal orders are issued in what's called in absentia, meaning people weren't there in the court when those orders were issued by a judge. They don't know if people even know that they are supposed to be deported. This happens a lot within immigrant communities. There's already a legal challenge trying to protect those people from deportation. So, Amna, we know some in the, the, the Trump administration are saying this is not new. Previous administrations have rounded up uh, immigrants before. What What is the case? What's the truth about that? Well, that's absolutely true. I mean, President Obama earned the nickname deporter-in-chief because he deported more people than any previous president. 2,000 people uh, does not seem like that many. It's a lot for a short period of time. I says they have the capacity to be able to do that. But look, the, the other problem is that in detention, there's been so many concerns about those conditions, as Yamish mentioned earlier, allegations of abuse, squalid conditions, uh, how children are properly cared for or not cared for in family detention. There's a number of reasons there's concern about additional people being brought into ICE custody and detention right now. So, Lisa, let me turn to you uh, now. Uh, the, this, uh, we've, we've seen much of this before. Democrats and others in Congress are, are pushing back. What are they doing? We're seeing Democrats flex more muscle, like there's a sort of phase two of how they're trying to confront this president as the opposition party. We saw just today the House Judiciary Committee uh, authorized subpoenas for 12 very high-ranking current and former Trump administration officials. This inclu includes Jared Kushner, also former campaign manager Corey Lewandowski, former chief of staff John Kelly. This is These people can be questioned on two things. One, their relations to the Mueller report. But also, Judy, these subpoenas directly talk about the zero tolerance policy and child separation at the border. These Democrats are saying we have not gotten satisfying answers from Homeland Security or the Trump administration in terms of what it is doing, is it legal, and they will now subpoena these officials. Of course, the problem is we've seen the Trump administration, the problem for Democrats, has said they don't feel that they need to uh, comply with these subpoenas. So Democrats are also taking another step there. Next week, they have announced they will take a vote on the House floor to file criminal contempt against Attorney General Barr mm -hmm. and also uh, the Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross, for their noncompliance in the view of the House with subpoenas about the census question. And so this will be a very, this is kind of as close as to clear combat as you can get in a legislative sense. Now, then that goes to the courts, and this takes a long time to enforce. But Democrats are stepping things up. One other note, Judy, about these ICE raids. You and Amna hit on such a key point that I heard from Republicans today, notably. Republicans are a little nervous about these ICE raids because they are worried about, in their communities, they see labor shortages. They mm -hmm. have seen in the past large raids like this, even under Obama, affect families and communities in very difficult ways. And they are concerned about how this will be enacted. I talked to multiple Republicans mm -hmm. who are just unsure and worried about how this goes. They're watching very carefully. Very interesting. Uh, being watched from so many different directions, as if this weren't enough uh, going on at the White House today. Yamiche, I want to come back to you because the president hosted something that the White House had talked about. This was a summit to discuss uh, social media and what is allowed and what isn't. Tell us about what took place there at that gathering. The goal of this social media summit at the White House today was really to argue that conservatives are being unfairly targeted and discriminated against by social media giants like Twitter and Facebook. Now, neither one of those companies were invited to the social media gathering. The president says he wants to invite those companies to the White House later on. But the president was essentially saying, we don't want to be censored as as, as Republicans. And he was saying that people that are pro-life, that are pro-Trump, their, their accounts are being targeted and even being pulled down. Um, there are people, of course, that disagree with that view. There are people who say this was really a gathering of far-right individuals and, at times, bad Internet actors. Um, one person that was at the White House today was a Twitter user who spread the racist idea that Senator Kamala Harris was not black enough to speak for African Americans because her mother's Indian and her father is Jamaican. So there's a lot of back and forth on this. There are a lot of people who think this was not a good gathering and that other people should have been more um, invited to this, that this should have been a more inclusive setting. So overall, there are a lot of complaints about this, but in a few weeks, there will be some social media sites coming to the White House, so that will continue to develop. 
And then just quickly, Amna, you've done some reporting uh, about that gathering and some of the language that was used there today. That's right. Some of those people Yamish mentioned who may self-identify as conservative are also identified by people who track extremist or dangerous rhetoric online as alt-right or far-right or extremist kind of views. They were in the room. Some of them aligned with white nationalist kind of language as well. And there was a recent study by a group called the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, which looked at how, and this is around the world, but also true here in the U.S., a lot of that language that previously existed only really on the far right fringes has become much more mainstream, particularly through the use of social media. So that was something they were watching today and a trend that they've been seeing increasing around the world, as I said, but really here in the U.S. as well. Disturbing. Uh, well, news on so many fronts today. Thank you, all three. Amna Nawaz, Lisa Desjardins, Yamish Alcinder at the White House. Thank you. Thanks.